everyone, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com and today I want to share with you 10 of my most favorite outdoor DIYs. I was planning on putting together and filming a whole new outdoor themed DIY video for you today, but as you can probably hear in the background and see, it's been raining non-stop, so I haven't had the chance. However, I'm going to do the next best thing, which is round up 10 of my most favorite outdoor themed DIYs that I've done over the years. There's lots of you that are new here, so I hope you enjoy these. I will give a brief description and link to the full tutorials down in the description box below. And for my longtime friends, my longtime subscribers, let me know how many of these you recognize from over the years. I would love to know if you remember any of these and how many you do. Let me know down in those comments below. Today is the outdoor DIY and decor challenge, so make sure if you are taking part in the challenge to add your video to the playlist I will link it down in the description box below make sure to watch everybody's videos I can't wait to see all of the amazing DIY and decor ideas for the outdoors that all of you have come up with today now let's get started this first one is so simple it's a rustic bench made of stumps and some old wood that I found on my aunt's farm so I took two stumps I put the wood right on top it was actually the perfect size for a bench and then I took a large nail gun and I nailed the wood to the stumps super easy I've used this as a table on our front porch I've used it in our garden and I still have it in our front yard Next one is also so easy. Put a little bit of Mod Podge on a watering can. This one is from Ikea. And then take some lace. This was vintage lace I found. Put it on top of the Mod Podge and then put one more layer of Mod Podge on top of that to seal up the lace and embellish your watering can. You can also do this for vases and plant pots as well. And it's a super cute DIY for spring and summer outside. My third favorite outdoor DIY is an outdoor sofa. Now this one was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. It's an Anna White plan and I will make sure to link it down in the description box below along with a full video tutorial. So I got some two by four cedar pieces of wood from the Home Depot and then I cut everything down to size according to the plan and I used some screws and my drill to put it all together. I sanded the piece at the end and stained it in this beautiful dark ebony color and then I added some outdoor cushions I found some at Ikea and I love how this piece turned out I actually used it at a show home to stage their back deck and you can see that little ottoman there that is the next DIY I want to show you and it's actually made from an old tire one of my good friends owns a tire shop and she gave me one of her old tires and then I found this sizal rope at the Home Depot I made some crochet chains just with my fingers just like this with the sizal rope and you can make as long of a crochet chain as you possibly can and just kind of leave it um, open at the end so you can add more then I went ahead and drilled a bunch of holes around the inside of the tire with a drill and I put some more of the sizal rope into those holes and I kind of wove it back and forth to make a nice sturdy interior. Then what you can do is take an industrial glue gun and start adding some glue. Make sure your glue is outdoor friendly and then start coiling that crochet chain that you made around the inside and to the outside of the tire. I think if I was to do this DIY again, I would probably spray paint the tire white or a tan color, and then that way it wouldn't show through my rope. Other than that, love how this one turned out. So unique and very inexpensive to make for your outdoor decor this year. Now on to the next DIY, and this one is a welcome mat. So simple, I got this mat from Walmart, and then I printed out the word welcome on a piece of paper and I cut it out with a craft knife. Then I'm using very small dabs of hot glue to affix the stencil that I made to the welcome mat. Now that I have a Cricut, I would probably use my Cricut to make a stencil, but this is a great way to make one if you don't have a Cricut cutting machine. Then I took some dark chalk paint and a foam brush and I went and dabbed some of the paint into the stencil. Next I took off the stencil and I removed any of the little pieces left behind with the glue gun and my welcome mat was all done. Very easy and it looks very cute on your front porch. 
The next DIY is one of my favorites from last year. I found these birdhouses at Dollarama. It's the dollar store here in Canada. I went and painted them with a gray stain and then used a turquoise color and dry brushed some of that on the birdhouses as well to give them a vintage weathered look. Next, I found some of these tree branches in our yard and I cut them to size three different sizes. Then I screwed them onto a scrap piece of wood so that they would all stand together. And then after that, I found a spot in my garden where I could sit these little poles and I covered the base with mulch. I put some glue on top of the poles and I affixed the birdhouses to the top of the poles just like this. Now, if you're doing this too, you can embellish these however you like. I use some dollar store raffia ribbon as well as some dollar store moss and some dollar store faux butterflies. I just use some glue to attach those to the birdhouses. I still have this little trio this year and I'm still very happy with how it turned out. This next one is one of my absolute favorite outdoor DIYs. We took a palette and cut it in half. My husband is just cutting it in half here. And then I went ahead and took some scrap wood and cut some legs for a potting bench. I affixed a couple of the legs to the bottom of the potting bench, of the pallet rather, and then I attached some longer legs to the back two corners of the pallet, just like this. I also had a vintage window, so I decided to put that in the middle of the pallets. If you want to get the full detailed tutorial on this, make sure to check out the link in the description box below where I explain all of the measurements and all of the details to make this pallet potting bench. After I finished building it, I sanded it down to remove any debris and gave it a nice clean with a pressure washer. Then I took some paint I had on hand and painted the whole thing. This paint is called Dreaming of the Day by Cloverdale and it's actually the same color as my front door that I painted this year. I also made a cute little sign with a scrap of wood and a sharpie and my DIY potting bench was complete. Still have this, still love it and it was one of my absolute favorite DIYs for summer. Now on to the next DIY and we are going to make an outdoor rug out of dollar store jute twine. Now everybody asks me if this really hurt my hands and actually it didn't hurt my hands as much as I thought it would. So I went and crocheted a chain with a very large crochet hook and then I single crocheted every single chain. Again, check out the full video tutorial I have for this rug. I will link it down in the description box below and up in the right hand corner and you'll learn all of the measurements and stitches that I did. This took me a few hours to complete, but it wasn't very expensive at all. You can make this rug as big or as small as you want it to be. I decided to crochet in the back loops of all of my stitches to give this rug a little bit of a texture. You can also add on new twine as needed. Once the rug was crocheted to the size I want it to, I tied it off and then I cut a few fringe pieces and added those on as well. I love how this looks and it's relatively easy to care for and softer on the feet than you might think. Here's another one of my favorite outdoor DIYs. These are some chairs that I built for a show home. This is another Anna White building pattern. I will leave the instructions for this down in the description box below. And it's made solely of two by fours and two by sixes. Very inexpensive. You can find them at your home improvement store. I got mine at Home Depot and I think I probably only spent 30 to $40 per chair. And these are very substantial and I think they turned out so well. So you can find all of the cutting instructions, all of the details down in the description box below, or just search Anna White outdoor chair and you'll find all of her, of her plans. She has some amazing building plans that are very simple, even for beginners. So after I cut all of the pieces and screwed them together, I used a sander and sanded everything down. 
I just have a little crosscut saw that I use all the time for so many of my DIYs. Finally, I painted these chairs in a white color. You could also sand and stain these chairs as well. I think both would look beautiful. And then I put some cushions in them. I believe I found these at Real Canadian Superstore along with the throw pillows from Michaels. And here's how they look on the front porch of a show home that I styled. Outdoor DIY number 10, the final one is this macrame light fixture. And this one I still have, and I've used it in so many spots. So I've used it on our front porch, I've used it on our back patio, and I think it is so interesting. So I took a very large embroidery, embroidery hoop, I found this one at Michael's, and then some macrame string I found as, at Michael's as well in the clearance section. I attached it all the way around the embroidery hoop with Lark's Heads knots, and then I made some square knots into a diamond pattern to create sort of a large light fixture look. This is another DIY that is a good idea to check out the full video tutorial that I have of it. I will link it down in the description box below. It only uses a couple of very simple macrame knots, so if you are a beginner at macrame, this would be a very good project to do. All you have to know is how to do a lark's head knot and how to do a square knot. And I've used this pattern of macrame many times in a lot of my projects over the last few years. This took me an afternoon to do and I attached some chains to the top of it and I hung it on a curtain rod on my ceiling to stabilize it and that way I was able to work on it just sit standing upright. I also attached the interior of the embroidery hoop to the bottom of this using just some square knots and kind of weaving that embroidery hoop underneath. And then finally I tied some overhead knots at the very end and cut all of the fringes evenly so they were the same length. I found this Copper Fairy Lights on Amazon. I will link those down in the description box below. I've used them a lot over the last few years. Definitely a wonderful investment and they come with a remote control. And I just kind of wove them in and out through the bottom of this chandelier. And here's how this one looks. I loved how it looked on our front porch a few years ago. And then I put it on our patio as well a couple years later and loved the look there. Thank you so much for watching my video today. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down in those comments below which of these 10 DIYs was your favorite. And make sure to check out all of the other outdoor themed DIY and decor ideas in the playlist today in my DIY and decor challenge playlist. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas on a budget. And I'm gonna leave some more videos that I hope you will enjoy right up here.